Thoughts and Sentiments on Humility, Part 4, Number 36. There are also two kinds of temptations. Those that come to us through the wickedness of the evil one, and those in which we go in search of ourselves in our own weakness and malice. But there is no better safeguard against either than humility. Humility causes the evil one to flee because he cannot face the humble on account of his great pride. And it causes every temptation to vanish suddenly because there can be no temptation without a touch of pride. Temptations arise against purity or against faith or any other virtue, but we can easily overcome them if we humble ourselves in our hearts and say, Lord, I deserve these terrible temptations as a punishment for my pride, and if you don't come to my help, I shall surely fall. I feel my weakness, and that I can do no good of myself. Help me. Come, help me, O God. O Lord, make haste to help me. The more a soul humbles itself before God, the more God comforts that soul with his grace. And inasmuch as God is with us, who shall prevail against us? The Lord is the protector of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Said King David. And St. Paul said, If God be for us, who is against us? The strongest subterfuge which the devil can employ in order to make us fall into temptation is to flatter our humility, thus preventing us from being humble. For if the evil one succeeds in persuading us that we have sufficient strength of ourselves to overcome temptation, we have already succumbed. As those succumbed of whom it was written, that the Lord humbles them that presume of themselves and glory in their own strength. Charity never grows cold nor fervor tepid except from lack of humility. Let us stand on our guard clad in the armor of humility and that will be sufficient. God will help us in the measure in which we are humble and with his help, we shall be able to say, I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Gentle, humble Jesus, replace my heart.